Chapter 181. There's no need to intervene. Hold on. Caspian raised his hand and shouted. He hadn't anticipated Joey to take action this quickly. What made it worse was her immediate intention to capture them. Caspian, this matter should have something to do with you, right? I'd say you're the mastermind behind this, Joey stated. She had guessed that Caspian was definitely connected to this matter. You're absolutely right. Caspian nodded. Do you hold a grudge against these people? Why resort to such extreme measures? She inquired. This tall man was reckless and broke the rules. He illegally possessed firearms too. Shouldn't he be killed? He remarked. In truth, Caspian didn't need to explain things to her. He could decide who to kill on his own. There was no need for Joey to interfere. His attitude left her somewhat speechless. But that's not a reason for you to kill them. Such matters can be handled by the Inspector General's office. All of you are required to come back with me for interrogation. We'll sort this out after I've investigated thoroughly, Joey said to Caspian. She wasn't intentionally making things difficult for Caspian. However, the deaths of foreigners in Diatoran would make for an unusual case. It had to be thoroughly investigated. It would be a bigger problem if it caused a war between the two countries. I have other matters to attend to. I can't go to the Inspector General's office, Caspian said. Calmly. What do you mean? Are you refusing to be arrested? Joey asked, feeling a bit annoyed. Both Sylvia and Macy, along with the elite team, gathered around when they saw this. What's going on? Are you planning to fight with the Inspector General's office? Men, handcuff all of them and take them back. Joey couldn't contain her anger. Caspian had indeed saved her several times, but this was an official matter. She had to apprehend him for the crimes he committed. The inspectors behind Joey moved in unison and surrounded them. Simultaneously, Sylvia's elite team stood behind her and showed no signs of backing down. The two forces had reached a standoff. Just then, Joey's phone rang. Glancing at her phone, she discovered it was a call from the regional chief of Two Lakes. Chief Satori, what can I do for you? Joey asked respectfully. Joey, I have something to inform you. Don't intervene in or inquire about what happened at South Lake Hospital, Chief Satori said nervously. But I'm already at the hospital. Why can't I handle the situation here? She was puzzled. Firstly, you can't lay a hand on Caspian. Secondly, those foreigners were all dispatched by Tigra. They intended to engage in espionage activities in South Lake City. They deserved to die. You only need to handle the subsequent issues at South Lake Hospital. Chief Satori asserted in a commanding tone. I understand, sir. Joey hadn't expected that the regional chief would personally call her regarding this matter. As the head of the inspector general's office, she dared not disobey her superior's orders. Since these people were Tigra's special forces and had ill intentions toward Caspian, they truly deserved death. Stop. It's all a misunderstanding. After hanging up the phone, Joey hurriedly intervened. Upon hearing her command, the inspectors obediently lowered their guns. Caspian also gestured at the elite team behind him to holster their weapons. Seeing this, Joey stared at him with an immensely surprised expression. She had noticed something amiss about Caspian back at the Cliff of Death. His identity was not as simple as it appeared. Various incidents suggested that Caspian certainly held a special status. Soon after, the onlookers began discussing amongst themselves. They didn't sympathize with the foreigners lying on the ground. Following this, Joey instructed her subordinates and medical staff to clear the scene. The bloodied corpses needed to be dealt with promptly. Caspian bade farewell to Stephanie and left South Lake Hospital. Inside the CEO's office at Glorious Group, the atmosphere was suddenly broken by an arrival. Mr. Taylor, something serious has happened. Bob rushed in, shouting anxiously. What happened? Take it slow and explain. Taylor furrowed his brows. Eleven of our special forces soldiers died at South Lake Hospital. Bob exclaimed. What? What exactly happened? Taylor was utterly shocked. Bob briefly explained the situation at South Lake Hospital to him. After hearing it, Taylor grew even more furious. A bunch of useless trash. Didn't they know who their opponent was? Caspian is the Diaterranean god of war. He's not that easy to deal with, 
Taylor couldn't contain his anger. They had no idea they were facing Caspian. We can't let this slide, can we? Bob spoke out in frustration. Those fools had no sense of the bigger picture. Who allowed them to wander around? Our top priority now is the veins and treasures in Dragon's Hill. Once we get hold of those, then we can seek revenge on Caspian. Taylor responded. Since things had escalated to this state, they needed to be more cautious. What about the cosmic octagonal nexus disk? How do we decode it? Bob asked. Don't worry about that. Over in Tigra, there are experts who have done research on cosmic octagonal nexus disks before. Looking at the time, they should be arriving in South Lake City soon. There's nothing that they can't crack open. Besides that, manage your subordinates well and keep them in line. Taylor assured confidently. I understand. Bob nodded. Caspian, Sylvia, and Macy sat together in a car after leaving South Lake Hospital. Since both of you are here, let's make a trip to Dragon's Hill, Caspian suggested. What? Why are we going to Dragon's Hill? Sylvia asked, puzzled. To see what those Tigra special forces dug up that made them suddenly cease their activities. There might truly be some treasure there, Caspian explained. Prior to this, those special forces would go to Dragon's Hill daily. But in the past few days, their movements had ceased. Caspian suspected that they had encountered something there. Rather than waiting, it was better to take action. While they had the time, Caspian wanted to see what secrets lay beneath Dragon's Hill. Do you think we should bring along our elite team? Sylvia asked. Let's bring them along. You inform them, he replied. Sylvia made a call to the members in the other vehicles and gave the order to head to Dragon's Hill. The convoy advanced toward Dragon's Hill. They arrived at the tunnel behind the bushes from before. At this point, the tunnel seemed endlessly deep. Caspian, I'll lead some people down to have a look as we're not sure of what's inside. Please wait outside. If anything happens, I'll report back immediately, Sylvia said. She decided to go in first as she was worried about the potential dangers below. Don't worry. Let's all go together. Caspian shook his hand. As the god of war, he had to lead by example. He couldn't stay outside and send his subordinates to risk their lives. Sylvia nodded, not arguing further. They lowered a rope with one end secured to a large rock, and the other extending into the tunnel. After several dozen feet, everyone landed safely. As they progressed, the passage widened, and they walked along the path for several dozen feet. Then, under the faint light of the flashlights, a massive double door made of stone appeared in front of them. Chapter 182, Cosmic Octagonal Nexus Disc. In the center of the stone door was a circular disc. There was a cosmic octagonal nexus on the disc, surrounded by a scattered astronomical star map. Isn't this a cosmic octagonal nexus disc? Why is it here? Sylvia asked in surprise. This is a cosmic octagonal nexus constellation map. The scattered stars represent the 28 constellations, and there are also 12 astrological signs. There's a mystery hidden in this. Caspian explained. At a glance, he understood the cosmic octagonal nexus constellation map. It's just a door. Why complicate things with such intricate details? Macy questioned. There seemed to be words on both sides of the door. Sylvia shone her flashlight on either side of the stone. Under the dim light, they saw the words written on it. They read, break the disc, enter this door so. The secret to opening the stone door lies in deciphering the star disc. Sylvia suddenly realized. Caspian nodded. The cosmic octagonal nexus disc served as the switch for the stone door. Only by unraveling the mysteries on it would they have a chance to open the door. No wonder those Tigra special forces haven't been active lately. They must have been stumped by this, Macy said. The cosmic octagonal nexus is a quintessential part of Diatorian's heritage. They're bound to be unable to decipher it, Caspian affirmed. Is deciphering the cosmic octagonal nexus disc really difficult? Macy, unfamiliar with such knowledge, asked. Don't ask such pointless questions next time. If it's used as the key to the stone door, it certainly isn't simple, Caspian remarked calmly. Soon after, they noticed traces of explosives on the corners of the stone door. Obviously, 
the Tigrins had used explosives, but they hadn't anticipated the door to be so sturdy. It seems there must be invaluable treasures behind this stone door, Macy speculated. You're saying pointless things again. If there's nothing in there, do you think Tigra would mobilize troops to come to South Lake City and excavate? Sylvia said helplessly. However, what puzzled everyone was how the people of Tigra knew about Diatoran's geographical veins. But this wasn't the time to ponder over that question. Let's not dwell on other matters for now. Since the Tigrans have helped us dig the passage and found the entrance, the priority now is to open this stone door. Caspian said as he began studying the cosmic octagonal nexus disc on the door. Lord Caspian, are you sure you can decipher it? Sylvia asked. Caspian raised his hand, signaling her to be quiet. He gazed at the cosmic octagonal nexus disc on the stone door as he delved deeper into his thoughts. After some careful observations, he realized some things. The 28 constellations, pointing north, south, east, and west represented the four majestic beasts, the azure dragon, white tiger, vermilion bird, and black tortoise. However, the azure dragon of the east constellation was surrounded by stars from all directions, indicating a dire situation. Combined with the name Dragon's Hill, it was evident that to open the stone door, they needed to resolve the crisis in the east constellation. Specifically, the azure dragon's predicament. Soon, Caspian was deeply engrossed in his thoughts as he generated countless ideas in his mind. When Sylvia and Macy saw his serious demeanor, they didn't dare to disturb him. At that moment, Caspian felt as though he were on an ancient battlefield. He was facing an onslaught from the four magical beasts charging from different directions. I will never sit back and wait for death. Even if I die, I'll die with dignity. His eyes were dull as he suddenly shouted. Sylvia and Macy were taken aback by Caspian's sudden outburst. The next moment, he rushed toward Sylvia, snatched her gun, and aimed at his own temple. This sudden turn of events terrified everyone present. Lord Caspian. Everyone shouted in a panic. Sylvia and Macy swiftly moved to snatch the gun from Caspian. A gunshot echoed in the tunnel. Thankfully, the bullet hit the surrounding wall. They were relieved to see Caspian unharmed. Lord Caspian, are you okay? Sylvia held the gun and asked anxiously. What just happened? Macy asked. They were both shocked by Caspian's attempt at self-harm. The gunshot jolted Caspian awake. What's wrong? Did something happen? Caspian noticed everyone looking at him in terror. Lord Caspian, why did you try to end your life? Luckily, we were quick to intervene. Sylvia exclaimed. If she and Macy hadn't acted immediately, Caspian might have. End my life. What are you talking about? Caspian was shocked. Yet, he realized he was holding a gun in his right hand. Sylvia and Macy held onto his hand tightly. Let go. I'm fine now, he said. Seeing Caspian regain his senses, they released him. Lord Caspian, what just happened? Macy asked as she couldn't wrap her head around the incident. This cosmic octagonal nexus disc is dangerous. It can bewilder the mind. Caspian recalled everything that happened and found it unbelievable. Is that even possible? Macy was astonished. Yes. I was studying the constellation chart when suddenly, it felt like I was on an ancient battlefield, and the four magical beasts were attacking me. Caspian recounted the scene earlier. Upon hearing this, everyone was shocked. They realized the seemingly inconspicuous cosmic octagonal nexus disc on the stone door had the power to disturb the mind and create illusions. This cosmic octagonal nexus disc is mysterious. We need to get an expert to decipher it. Caspian stated. His knowledge in this area was limited. Sylvia and Macy were reluctant. They wanted to explore if there was another way to open the door. However, after surveying the area, they felt helpless. Thick stone walls surrounded them. The walls were so sturdy that even explosives couldn't break them down. Maybe I should try and move the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. What if it works? Macy naively suggested. Don't act recklessly. We don't know if there are any traps here. Take a photo of the disc and we'll study it further, Caspian commanded. Macy was too stubborn, and Caspian felt helpless looking at her. 
At this moment, a person flashed in his mind. That person might understand the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. The person was his wife, Willow. Once, during a casual conversation, Caspian learned that Willow's grandfather was an expert in astronomy. He even passed some of his knowledge to her. Chapter 183, A Deadlock. Caspian. Caspian, are you all right? When Sylvia saw that Caspian was lost in thought, she worried that he might have been affected by the cosmic octagonal nexus disc again. What's wrong? Caspian turned and asked. You startled me. I thought something happened to you again. She let out a sigh of relief. Don't worry. I just thought of someone who might be able to decipher this. Caspian explained. He wouldn't fall for the same trap twice in the same place. Who? Do you know anyone skilled in this area? Sylvia asked curiously. It wouldn't be a surprise if he knew someone capable of deciphering the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. You know this person too. It's Willow, he replied calmly. In truth, he wasn't sure if Willow knew the secrets involved. What? Willow knows how to decipher 11. Sylvia asked in amazement. In her mind, anyone versed in this field would have substantial knowledge. Willow didn't seem like she possessed such knowledge. Yes. She mentioned that her grandfather once shared some of the mysteries in astronomy with her. I need to ask her for specifics, Caspian said. Willow is truly amazing. She's beautiful and knowledgeable. Sylvia praised. Initially, she thought Willow wasn't suitable for Caspian. But now, it seemed they were a good match. Caspian's wife has only heard about these matters. She's not an expert. I find her a little unreliable, Macy remarked sarcastically. For some reason, she felt annoyed upon hearing people praise Willow. She wondered if what she was feeling was jealousy. Macy, mind your words. Is it appropriate to say this in front of Caspian? Sylvia's expression turned serious. What's inappropriate about it? I'm just telling the truth, Macy replied curtly. She was just being honest that Willow wasn't a professional in this field. Perhaps Macy has a point. We could hand over the photo of this star disc to a specialist in Diatoran to decipher, Caspian suggested. They couldn't entirely depend on Willow alone. Afterward, Sylvia took photos of the surrounding patterns. With that, Caspian left the place with his elite team. This wasn't a matter that could be rushed. They needed a specialist to decipher it. After leaving Dragon's Hill, Caspian went straight back to his villa. He wanted to consult Willow in person about the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. When she mentioned it before, he hadn't taken it seriously. Yet, coincidentally, he remembered it today. Willow was home earlier than usual today. She was sitting on the sofa, engrossed in a book. Willow, what are you reading? Caspian leaned over her as he was curious when he lowered his head. He caught a faint fragrance coming from her. It's a book passed down from my grandfather. It's something you wouldn't understand, she replied. Caspian took a glance at the book and noticed that it contained a lot of astronomical knowledge, including geographical secrets. Is this the cosmic octagonal nexus constellation chart? He pointed at a picture in the book. The picture looks somewhat similar to the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. How do you know that? Do you understand it too? I remember mentioning it to you before, but you didn't seem interested then. Willow was surprised after hearing his words. I don't understand it. Do you? Caspian asked tentatively. Of course, I do. My grandfather taught me a lot about this, and the book contains detailed records. An ordinary geomanger might not know as much as me. She replied somewhat proudly. Her grandfather was highly skilled in this area, and much of what was written in the book was based on his experiences. Really? Why does it sound like you're boasting to me? He teased. He wanted to provoke her a little bit. I know about astronomy, geography, and metaphysics. There's nothing that I don't know about. She huffed. Then let's make a bet. I have a chart here. If you can decipher it, you can ask for anything, and I'll agree. Really? Then I'll have you give me a good message. I've been so tired at work lately, Willow said with a smile. Her smile was brimming with confidence. Then... Caspian took out his phone and opened the photo of the stone door. The cosmic octagonal nexus disc was visible on the door. Moreover, the picture displayed the entire view of the disc. 
When Willow saw the photo, her eyes widened, and she froze in place. Caspian, where did you get this picture from? She exclaimed. Although she only glanced at it, she could already tell there was a mystery hidden within it. Why? You can't decipher it. Sylvia sent it to me, saying it's some kind of decryption game. Caspian said, he didn't tell her the truth as it would be hard to explain it to her. It's not that I understand it, but this cosmic octagonal nexus chart can't be deciphered. It's a dead end. The East Constellation, which symbolizes the Azure Dragon, is under attack and is in a perilous situation. It's impossible to decipher this at all. It's a complete deadlock. Willow analyzed. She even suspected that Caspian was purposely making it difficult for her by choosing such a challenging chart for her to decode. That's true. It does look like a deadlock right now. But I think if you look carefully, there might be a way to crack it, Caspian said. This chart was the key to open the stone door. An ordinary person wouldn't be able to see its hidden secrets at a glance. Otherwise, the door would have been opened long ago. There's nothing to see. It's clear that this is a dead end. It's impossible to crack. Did Sylvia miss something, or did she not capture everything completely? Willow asked. She was sure that this was a dead end. Otherwise, with her knowledge, she would definitely be able to crack it. Don't rush. Take another look. Maybe you'll discover some mysteries, Caspian advised. Under his persuasion, Willow carefully examined the photo again. The next moment, she suddenly realized that this wasn't a decoding game. It was an ancient puzzle with history. Chapter 184. Nothing to worry about. Where exactly is this stone door? Why does it say, break the disc, enter this door? Are you sure Sylvia didn't lie to you? Is this really a game? Willow's interest grew stronger. She didn't explain in detail, but she said that there are rewards if I successfully decipher it. Caspian casually made up a lie, but this puzzle is too difficult. It'll take some effort to crack, Willow remarked. There are many small constellations next to the major ones, right? Perhaps one of them is the key to unlocking the puzzle, he suggested. He believed that the way to decode the cosmic octagonal nexus disk lay within the disk itself. I'll examine it carefully, Willow said as she looked at the photo, getting lost in deep thought. She hadn't anticipated encountering such a challenging constellation chart. At this moment, her brain was working at high speed, with various constellations constantly shifting in her mind. Each movement represented a different change. There could be thousands of variations on the entire star disk. Willow's expression gradually grew more serious. The layout of the star disk was beyond her control. At this point, her mind was immersed in the cosmic octagonal nexus disk. It's impossible. There's no reason that I'd fail this. She suddenly shouted and stood up. Willow seemed to be going mad as she waved her arms and continuously hit Caspian. He held her tightly, silently enduring everything. What he feared the most had happened. Willow had lost consciousness just like what had happened to him. She too was trapped in this mental maze. While the cosmic octagonal nexus disk might seem harmless to the unknowing, once someone who understood its secrets got involved, it became highly dangerous. Willow became increasingly agitated. Helplessly, Caspian held her cheeks and kissed her. The kiss seemed to have an effect as her actions gradually slowed down a bit. Just as Caspian was about to deepen the kiss, an accident occurred. Willow screamed and fiercely bit him. His face stiffened. He hurriedly pulled back as he dared not continue. He might lose his tongue in the process. Caspian, what happened to you? Willow had regained her senses. She was surprised to see a trace of blood at the corner of Caspian's mouth. It's all because of you, he answered somewhat speechlessly. She felt guilty as she couldn't remember what had happened just now. The constellation chart made you lose control, he said. Caspian had been most worried that Willow would lose control, yet it still happened. What? Well, when you put it like that, I seem to recall something, she said with a nod. The images that appeared in her mind just now were inexplicable. Let's forget about it. The puzzle is too hard to crack. Can you massage my shoulders and legs today? I'm tired from work. Willow coquettishly requested. She had returned early to the villa today to rest. With pleasure. Caspian smiled. Then, 
He began massaging Willow's calves and slowly inched forward as he went. Her legs were exceptionally slender and smooth. They were enough to trigger one's imagination. She lightly hummed. Caspian's technique was really good. When she saw that he was staring at her legs, she felt a bit embarrassed. Why do you keep staring at my legs? It's not like you haven't seen them before. I didn't pay much attention before. Now, as I'm looking at them, they are really beautiful. He exclaimed. Stop flattering me. Why didn't you say that before? Hurry up and massage my shoulders. She rolled her eyes at him. Caspian nodded and began massaging her shoulders. He really hadn't noticed how beautiful Willow's legs were in the past. A glorious group. An elderly man in his 70s with gray hair arrived at the CEO's office. Taylor stood up respectfully upon seeing the arrival of this person. Welcome, Mr. Shaw. Your visit is long, awaited. The old man's name was Henry Shaw. He was originally from Diatoran. He was knowledgeable in astronomy and geography, and had done extensive research on cosmic octagonal nexus constellations. However, he later moved to Tigra and never returned. As Henry sat down, someone promptly brought in a cup of high-quality coffee. Mr. Taylor, let's not waste time. Bring me to the stone door and I'll crack the puzzle. Henry took a sip of his coffee. Do you already have a way to solve the puzzle, Mr. Shaw? Taylor asked. Of course. I've read numerous books and am extremely knowledgeable in astronomy and geography. How could a mere cosmic octagonal nexus disk pose a challenge to me? Henry said confidently. That is fantastic. You'll surely achieve, Taylor exclaimed excitedly. He had no doubts about Henry's ability. Cut the nonsense. Hurry and take me to the stone door. I'm not used to it here. After cracking the puzzle, I want to return to Tigra immediately, Henry said. He had grown accustomed to life in Tigra after so many years, so he felt somewhat out of place in Diatoran. Mr. Shaw, there's no need to rush. Since you've just arrived, Let's have a meal first before we proceed, Taylor suggested. All right, I am a little hungry. With that, Taylor took Henry to a hotel for dinner. At midnight, Taylor personally led a team with Henry to Dragon's Hill. This time, he didn't dare to be careless as he highly valued the veins and treasures there. Moreover, he brought 500 Special Forces soldiers along. They needed to be fully prepared as once the stone door was opened. The situation inside was unpredictable. As for whether they could obtain those veins and treasures, it all depended on Henry's abilities. After arriving at Dragon's Hill, they silently entered the passage. Before long, they arrived at the front of the stone door. Inside Riverside Villa, Caspian was sound asleep when his phone suddenly vibrated. It was a call from Sylvia. Caspian, I'm really sorry to bother you at this hour, but there's an emergency at Dragon's Hill. She urgently spoke. Get to the point. Caspian glanced at Willow, who was still sound asleep. He answered in a lowered voice. My informant just told me that Taylor has entered Dragon's Hill with over 500 Special Forces soldiers and an elderly man. Sylvia replied anxiously. Chapter 185 Unraveling the Mystery An elder. Do you know his identity? Caspian asked. This was an important mission for Tigra. And since they were bringing along an elderly person, it was clear that he was no ordinary man. I've had someone look into the background of that elder. He just arrived from Tigra. His name is Henry Shaw. He's originally from Diatorn, but later moved to Tigra. He's proficient in astronomy, geography, and metaphysics. He's a professional in these fields. Sylvia reported. As expected, this person was found by Tigra to solve the puzzle of the cosmic octagonal nexus disk, Caspian remarked. Exactly. Once Henry cracks open the door, the treasures inside Dragon's Hill will definitely be emptied in no time. Caspian, what should we do now? She asked urgently. There was absolutely no time to waste. Let's not act rashly. Let's observe the situation first, Caspian said. Taking action now would undoubtedly lead to a confrontation between the two countries. But if we wait any longer, the veins and treasures in Dragon's Hill will be taken away. Sylvia urgently remarked. Don't worry. Their numbers are limited. They can't clear out everything in a short time. Let them move the things out. Then we'll make our move. 
Caspian suggested. Has Willow figured out any way from the star chart? She asked. No. This puzzle is quite difficult to crack. It's good to let Henry give it a try. Continue monitoring the scene and report to me immediately if there's any problem, he replied. I understand. With that, Sylvia hung up the phone. Caspian knew that getting the treasures of Dragon's Hill would certainly lead to a battle. But with limited manpower on his side, a reckless attack might result in severe losses. In order to win, he had to get as much manpower as he could. At the thought of this, Caspian immediately made a call to John. He went straight to the point and ordered John to mobilize more troops. John didn't ask many questions either because he could tell from Caspian's tone that the situation was urgent. After receiving the orders, South Eridland's naval, land, and air forces were all mobilized and headed toward South Lake City. Who are you calling in the middle of the night? Suddenly, Willow's voice reached Caspian's ears. He was startled and worried that Willow had overheard his conversation with John and Sylvia. If so, she would definitely know his identity. Did I disturb your sleep? He shifted the topic. You answer me first. Who are you talking to at this late hour? Willow switched on the bedroom lights and looked somewhat upset as she questioned him. No one. You must have misheard. Caspian didn't tell the truth because he knew it would be hard to explain. You're still lying to me. I clearly heard you talking softly to someone just now. Tell me the truth. Do you have a lover? Willow suddenly felt aggrieved. She'd been busy with work these days and hadn't spent much time with Caspian. Could he have found a lover? Earlier, she had heard his voice while half awake, but hadn't caught the specific content. However, Caspian's secretive behavior made her feel very insecure. I'm innocent. I don't have a lover, he explained. He hadn't expected Willow to be jealous because of this. If he'd known, he would have made the call outside the bedroom. However, Caspian also realized that she hadn't clearly heard the content of his calls, which eased his worries slightly. Give me your phone. I want to see who's keeping you up at this late hour. Willow demanded firmly. Willow, what's wrong? Why are you so sensitive? Are you jealous? Caspian was surprised by Willow's request for his phone. In the past, she wouldn't have cared about this. This showed that she was starting to care more about him. I've been busy lately, and I haven't been paying much attention to you. Who knows if you might have a lover, Willow said. Caspian, feeling helpless, reluctantly handed over his phone. However, when she checked the recent call logs, she found only two recent calls. The first was a call from Sylvia, while the other was a call made to John. See? They're the people you know. How could I have a lover? Do you believe me now? Caspian shrugged as he explained. Why did Sylvia call you this late? Why is she always hanging around you? Do you two have something going on? Willow continued pressing for answers. How is that possible? We're comrades. I'm not interested in her at all. If there were any interest, we'd have gotten together long ago. You've got it wrong. She was just discussing military matters with me. Caspian explained. Hearing this, Willow nodded. It seemed like what Caspian said made sense. If something were to happen between Caspian and Sylvia, it would have happened a long time ago. What about John? He's a general, so he's extremely busy. What could you possibly talk about with him? Even if you have his number, you shouldn't disturb him at this hour, Willow said. You're right. I won't do it again, Caspian chuckled. Willow dispelled her doubts and didn't press further. Feeling sleepy, she turned over and went back to sleep. Inside the tunnel of Dragon's Hill, Taylor and the others had arrived at the massive stone door. Mr. Shaw, here's the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. Please unlock this puzzle, Taylor urged. He was anxious to know what treasures lay behind the door. Wait a moment. Let me examine it closely, Henry said, scrutinizing the stone door. Then, he placed his hands on the disc. Each constellation represented a chess piece. To enter the door, they needed to resolve the crisis of the Eastern Azure Dragon. He wanted to move the constellations, but, being elderly, he lacked the strength. The constellations seemed firmly attached, as if a strong magnet held them in place. Find someone strong to follow my instructions, Henry directed. Immediately, 
Bob selected the strongest soldier among his men. Move the Beta Ariatus forward, and the Alpha Tauri to the right, Henry commanded. What are Beta Ariatus and Alpha Tauri? The soldier looked bewildered as he was clueless about these things. You don't even know this. Henry shook his head with a sigh. He raised his flashlight and illuminated the corresponding constellations. Chapter 186 Reward Mr. Shaw, please calm down. They're all special forces soldiers from Tigra. They don't have any knowledge about Diatoran, Taylor hastily explained. If they angered him, they wouldn't be able to crack the code. Therefore, for the sake of this, Taylor had to show utmost respect to him. Henry didn't say much. He knew that ordinary people wouldn't understand the mysteries of the cosmic octagonal nexus. Hence, he used a flashlight to point out the corresponding constellations. Under his command, the soldier began gradually shifting the eastern constellations. The most unexpected thing happened. The constellations from the other three directions began to move on their own. This scene shocked everyone present. The wisdom of the ancient Diatorians was indeed unfathomable. However, after the movement of several constellations, the situation seemed to become even more dangerous. The situation with the Azure Dragon was already grim. If this continued, the situation was bound to be lost. As for Taylor, Bob, and the others, they simply couldn't comprehend what was happening. They could only silently pray that Henry could solve this puzzle. However, they noticed Henry's expression growing more solemn and sensed that the situation was turning dire. At this point, Henry was sweating heavily. He had just taken five steps, yet the situation had already gone beyond his control. Now, he could only take a risk. He directed the soldier to move an important constellation, Starweave. It symbolized the water leopard. He hoped that this move would have an unexpected effect. But surprisingly, right after the Starweave constellation moved, the southern vermilion bird constellation suddenly shifted. It diffused the situation on this side. However, the Starweave constellation was slowly eaten after that move. Following that, a terrifying incident occurred. Just as the Starweave constellation vanished in an instant, a crack appeared on the cosmic octagonal nexus disk. Within it, a cold light flashed, and a long knife shimmered, coming straight through. The soldier standing in front was immediately beheaded. His blood splashed on the cosmic octagonal nexus disk. The sudden turn of events stunned everyone. The cold light flashed and then receded into the disk. Everything happened so fast that none of them were able to react. With a thud, the soldier's head rolled on the ground. His arm remained in the position as before, and blood gushed from his neck. Finally, his entire body collapsed backward. All those who witnessed this gruesome scene were terrified. Now, they finally realized the terror of this cosmic octagonal nexus disk. Once the eastern azure dragon constellation was devoured, the one who deciphered it would be killed too. Henry trembled in fear as he froze in place. Thankfully, he hadn't moved the pieces himself. Otherwise, he would have become a corpse by now. The other soldiers felt fortunate they weren't chosen. No one would have escaped such a sudden accident. In the next moment, all the constellation pieces on the cosmic octagonal nexus disk returned to their original positions. Seeing this, everyone suddenly realized that the cosmic octagonal nexus disk could be reset. Mr. Shaw, weren't you confident that you could solve it? Why did you still fail? Taylor asked disappointedly. He thought Henry would be able to quickly decipher the puzzle. This cosmic octagonal nexus disk is quite peculiar. I was careless to think I could solve it immediately. Let me think again. Henry changed his tone and said, Are you sure you can do it? I lost a valuable soldier because of your carelessness. Bob angrily questioned. He handpicked each of his subordinates and trained them personally. Each of them was extensively trained and capable of fighting any battle. Losing even one was heartbreaking for Bob. If I can't solve this puzzle, then no one can. Let me ponder it further. Henry remained highly confident in his abilities. Think carefully this time. Make sure you're absolutely certain before making a move, Taylor urged. He was really eager to obtain the treasures behind the stone door. Taylor wasn't ready to give up, 
as he had come this close to opening the door. After investing so much time and effort, all he needed to do now was to open the stone door. Then, he would be able to get the treasures. Even if he needed to sacrifice all these special forces soldiers, it would be worth it as long as he was able to get the minerals and treasures. All right, everyone quiet down. Let me think this through. After finishing his words, Henry focused intensely on the cosmic octagonal nexus disc and got lost in his thoughts. The soldiers stood still, not daring to make a sound. But deep inside, they were nervous as they feared that they might be called upon to move the pieces. After some contemplation, Henry seemed to have understood his previous mistake and was preparing to make an improvement. This time, he needed to move the Starweave constellation earlier. Dragon thrived in the water. I figured it out. This time, I can surely unravel the puzzle. Henry exclaimed and tapped his head in excitement. Are you sure? Please don't let the same thing happen again. Bob expressed his concern. He didn't want to lose another subordinate. He still needed to arrange for one of his soldiers to stand in front of the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. Without complete certainty, Bob wasn't willing to risk his subordinates. Unraveling this kind of puzzle is critical at every step. A single move can alter the entire situation. This time, I'm very confident. Henry stated confidently. Then let's act quickly, Taylor urged anxiously. Unlike Bob, Taylor wasn't concerned about the lives of these special forces soldiers. He only wanted what was behind the stone door. I need a strong man like last time to follow my instructions and move the constellation pieces, Henry said. Even if he had the strength, he wouldn't put himself at risk after knowing the danger of the cosmic octagonal nexus disc. Bob, you know these soldiers better. You pick one, Taylor suggested. Bob felt somewhat helpless, but he had to comply. Any soldier willing to step up and complete this difficult task? Bob glanced at the soldiers and asked unwillingly. After the previous events, these soldiers were already somewhat afraid. They were also worried that because of Henry's mistake, they might lose their lives. Seeing no response, Taylor immediately said, anyone who's willing to step up and complete this task will receive a reward of $3 million. With such a generous offer, there were sure to be men who would step forward. Taylor didn't hold back as he was ready to spend. He was sure that someone would risk their life for that amount of money. Taylor was willing to spend some money, as long as he could get the door open. After all, the treasures inside were invaluable. Three million dollars was not a small figure, and it was enough to pique the soldier's interest. I'll do it. Sure enough, a burly soldier took a few steps forward. The allure of money was irresistible to some. All right. Once successful, I'll immediately give you three million dollars. Mr. Shaw, let's get started, Taylor said. Then, Henry directed the soldier as before. However, this time, he positioned himself a bit farther back. He was afraid that he might get injured by the blade hidden behind the cosmic octagonal nexus disc if he made a mistake. Chapter 187. You're a liar. At the same time, both Taylor and Bob took a few steps backward as well. They were apprehensive about the cosmic octagonal nexus disc as nobody knew what might suddenly emerge from it. The special forces soldier standing in front of the stone door quickly prepared himself. He was aware that a long knife was hidden within the disc. If anything happened, he'd be the first to dodge. This time, things seemed to be going more smoothly. Henry moved a few pieces forward and saw that the situation was getting better. He took another few more steps and was almost close to unraveling the puzzle. But in the next moment, the situation took a drastic turn. One move changed the entire scenario. Henry was utterly stunned. At this moment, he realized that he wasn't fully prepared to solve it. Although there were only 28 constellations, there were hundreds of possibilities that could happen. He had to be cautious in making every move. Henry had always considered himself knowledgeable in this field. He had decoded similar cosmic octagonal nexus puzzles before and thought this would be equally easy to solve. However, he realized he had been careless. What do I do next? The soldier sensed something was amiss and immediately inquired. To dispel his concerns, Henry had no choice but to pretend as if nothing was wrong and continue directing. When the soldier saw the subtle change in Henry's expression, 
he had a feeling that something bad might have happened. He got ready to dodge. As anticipated, the White Tiger constellation tore the Azure Dragon constellation apart. They failed once again. Henry's face darkened as he immediately bent and retreated a few steps. The constellation chart was becoming increasingly hard to read. Sensing that something was amiss, the soldier immediately turned to escape, but the unexpected occurred in the next moment. This time, the long knife didn't swing out instead. Faint glints appeared on the walls. Hundreds of arrows swiftly shot toward the soldier, killing him. Witnessing this, everyone's expression froze in horror. They gasped and began to retreat hastily. No one had anticipated such hidden traps. Everyone present was shaken to the core. They grabbed their flashlights and began looking around, fearing more unforeseen events. Nobody knew what other traps might spring up. At this moment, the cosmic octagonal nexus disk reverted to its original state. Mr. Shaw, why did we fail again? Weren't you confident this time? Bob was infuriated as he lost another comrade. I didn't expect it. I was careless just now, Henry said, somewhat embarrassed. The ever-changing puzzle was beyond his control. Because of your carelessness, I've lost another soldier. If you can't do it, we'll get someone else, Bob impatiently retorted. I'll be more cautious next time. Just wait. Henry swallowed hard and reassured him. However, the soldiers felt that Henry was unreliable as he was flustered and panicking. They felt that he was playing games with them and they would bear the consequences. Right now, nobody would willingly come forward and move the disc. Mr. Taylor, I think his title is probably fake. We should leave first and discuss this matter in depth, Bob urgently suggested. Losing two elite soldiers from Tigra was a regrettable loss. Hearing this, Henry was enraged. How dare anyone question him? What did you say? When I was in my prime, you were probably still nursing. If I can't solve this, nobody in this world can. As Bob stared at Henry, who was enraged, he became even more resolute in his thoughts. How could a master be so narrow-minded? He barely said anything and Henry was already pissed. I really doubt your expertise seeing as your emotions are unstable. Anyway, I won't risk my soldiers anymore. Since you've received the benefits given to you by Tigra, you can solve this on your own, Bob said. Calm down, both of you. We're all working for Tigra. We're so close to getting the treasures behind the stone door. With Mr. Shaw's reputation, I believe he'll find a solution. Seeing the two argue, Taylor quickly stepped in to persuade them. Since Taylor had already spoken, Bob didn't continue to argue anymore. He was here on a mission, and he would be punished if he failed it. In completing tasks. Yet, Bob found these sacrifices regrettable. Mr. Shaw, there can't be another failure. I'll trust you for the last time. Please, be cautious. Taylor instructed. Henry's ability was acknowledged throughout Tigra. If even he couldn't solve this, there might be no one in Tigra capable of solving it. Don't worry. This concerns my reputation. I'll be extremely cautious. Henry calmed himself and replied. However, no soldier dared to step up to assist him. In desperation, Taylor raised the reward to $5 million. Soon enough, another fearless soldier stepped forward. With that sum, he could live a good life for a long time. This time, Henry seemed more adept as he took over 30 steps. Yet, unexpectedly, the Northern Obsidian Sentinel Array suddenly attacked. This sudden turn of events disrupted Henry's arrangement. He found himself in a difficult position once more. While he could decipher the puzzle based on the previous layout, the rapidly changing situation was beyond his control. Mr. Shaw, what's the next move? The soldier asked nervously. He was utterly clueless about the situation. Quiet. Don't interrupt my thoughts. Henry snapped. He stared at the disc, trying to find an entry point. Suddenly, his head felt heavy, and he fell into a trance. He saw countless stars surrounding him, and the four magical beasts charging at him. Seeing Henry turn pale, everyone knew that something was amiss. All of a sudden, Henry felt a sharp pain in his throat and coughed up blood. Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw, 
Are you okay? Taylor asked anxiously. They rushed to help the man who had just snapped out of the trance. But now, the situation was at a dead end. However, for the sake of his pride, Henry didn't want to tell them. Mr. Shaw, shall we continue? The soldier asked once again. Although he didn't understand what was happening, the look on Henry's face told him that the situation wasn't great. If they stopped now, he could perhaps survive. Continue. I thought of a plan just now, so I got a bit excited. We're getting closer to the treasure, so we can't give up now. Henry feigned calm and declared. Chapter 188, Geomancy Master. Mr. Shaw, are you sure? The soldier asked curiously. He didn't want to die. Don't worry. Just do as I say, and nothing bad will happen. Henry continued. But he was lying as there was no way to change the situation anymore. The soldier had no choice but to follow Henry's order. However, this time, the white tiger, vermilion bird, and black tortoise simultaneously attacked the azure dragon. The azure dragon suffered a devastating defeat. The soldier watched helplessly as the piece got eaten and felt a sense of impending doom. Just as he prepared to escape, a massive stone came crashing down, turning him into a pulp. Seeing the three bodies on the ground, everyone suddenly realized that Henry had been lying. You deceitful old man, how dare you trick us? Yeah, how dare you act confident when you're not even sure? Damn it. And you call yourself a master. This old guy doesn't have any skills. He doesn't even care about our comrades' lives. Don't believe a word he says anymore. The special forces soldiers were furious, ready to lay hands on Henry. Seeing this, Henry immediately hid behind Taylor. Mr. Taylor, you must protect me. I came all the way from Tigra. How could I be a fraud? The Constellation Board situation changes constantly, and it's beyond my control. Henry pleaded. Bob, calm your men down. Compensation will be given to the families of the fallen soldiers. Taylor knew Henry wasn't a fraud. But his three consecutive failures had indeed left everyone disappointed. I can calm them down, but I demand a replacement. I won't trust this old man anymore, Bob said angrily. His three subordinates died in vain. All right, let's call it a day. I'll consult with King Can and see what's next, Taylor replied. Everyone was quite frightened, hence it wasn't suitable to continue. They could only retreat now and carefully plan their next moves. Soldiers, let's all calm down. The losses were inevitable. Rest assured that those who have been sacrificed will get compensation. Let's retreat now and figure out the next step later. Bob said to his soldiers, though Taylor was his superior, Bob had to take responsibility for his subordinates. Otherwise, he'd be nothing more than a figurehead. The disc returned to its original state once again. Henry was too shaken and dared not attempt further. I wasn't prepared today. I'll return when I've thought of a foolproof way, he explained, trying to save some dignity. But Bob wasn't buying it. Not prepared. Why didn't you say so earlier? I think you're just a fraud, Bob said bluntly. What do you know? It's incredibly difficult for me to make those few moves in such a challenging puzzle, Henry retorted. Bob didn't bother to continue further. Then, they buried the three bodies and left. Caspian couldn't sleep the whole night after hearing about the Tigran's operation. He had been waiting for Sylvia's news. At this moment, his phone buzzed once more. He quietly left the bedroom and answered the call. How's it going? Caspian asked. They left Dragon's Hill, seemingly empty-handed. Sylvia answered. It seems they couldn't crack the puzzle, he remarked. If they had succeeded, they wouldn't have returned empty-handed. I noticed that they were missing three individuals. Perhaps an accident occurred, or they were left behind to guard the place, she analyzed. After they've left, take some men with you and investigate the situation, Caspian instructed. Understood. With that, she ended the call. Caspian sat on the couch and waited for Sylvia's updates. Forty minutes later, Sylvia called again. Caspian, something seems off. We found two bodies buried in front of the stone door. One body was beheaded while the other was shot by arrows. There's also a boulder, and underneath it is a crushed body. It seems there are hidden traps here, Sylvia reported after surveying the area. 
Check the surroundings for any other potential traps and examine the disc. Are there any changes to it? Caspian asked. The disc seems unchanged, but the dust on it is gone. It was as if it was moved but returned to its original state. Should I try moving it to see what will happen? Sylvia was puzzled at the situation. Hold on. Don't act recklessly. They might have triggered the traps due to decryption failure. Return with your team, and I'll figure this out. They'll surely come back. After all, they've wasted too much time and energy there, he instructed. I understand. But if even Henry can't solve it, who else can? Any chance that Willow can do it? She asked. She has seen the photo, but has no idea about it. But one thing for sure is that the Tigrans won't give up. For now, retreat with your team, Caspian said before hanging up. Taylor returned to Glorious Group, as he felt it wasn't wise to sit idly by. Bob, get your subordinates to investigate if Diatorin has any knowledgeable masters. We need to solve that puzzle. Taylor instructed, don't we have that master from Tigra? Why do we need to look for someone else? Bob replied sarcastically. He's currently clueless, and we can't rely solely on him. We must find others, and we need to uncover the treasures quickly, Taylor urged. Understood. I'll get on it, Bob said and left the office. After a while, he hurried back into the office. Mr. Taylor, we found a master in this field, but unfortunately, he has passed away. However, it was sad that before he died, he handed a manual to his granddaughter that contains various astronomical, geographical, and geomancy techniques. Bob exclaimed excitedly, Who's his granddaughter? Can we bring her in? Taylor anxiously inquired, We know her. She's the president of Southlake Corporation, Willow Stewart, Bob answered. Chapter 189 Multiple Crises What? How is that possible? Who was her grandfather? Taylor asked, surprised. He always thought Willow was merely the president of Southlake Corporation. He didn't know she had such a background. Willow's grandfather was Xander Stewart. He was highly accomplished in geomancy. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago. However, I found some information that he possessed a manual, and it's likely in Willow's hand now, Bob explained. This was the information he managed to collect in a short time. He was taken aback at first, but as there was more evidence, he gradually came to believe it. Here's some information on Xander. Bob passed a tablet to Taylor. On the tablet was a new report about Xander's early fame and expertise in astronomy and geomancy. Under the pressure of his family to continue the legacy, he took over the company, but never gave up on his interest. I didn't expect Willow to have such an amazing grandfather. With Xander gone, I wonder if she learned anything. We can capture her for interrogation or steal the manual from her. Taylor exclaimed excitedly. It's a good plan, but Caspian is her husband. It might be risky to act rashly, Bob expressed his concern. Caspian's strength was unfathomable, and Bob didn't dare to act without a proper strategy. Things might work in our favor. We could capture Willow, and use her as leverage to lure Caspian into the tunnel at Dragon's Hill. Even if he's powerful, he'll surely meet his end if he's there alone, Taylor said. Despite Caspian's status as the Diaterranean god of war, they had an army of soldiers, so they weren't afraid. After all, Caspian was only human. As powerful as he was, he couldn't possibly use his skills in a tunnel. Excellent. If Willow can solve the puzzle, we can accomplish two missions. Even if she can't, we'll seize the manual and kill Caspian. Bob chuckled. Make sure Willow tells us the exact location of the manual. We shall observe if she can solve the puzzle. After she unlocks the disc, we'll kill her. Taylor added. He cared more about the treasures behind the stone door. Though unsure of Willow's ability, he wanted to give it a try. I understand. I'll arrange it now. Bob responded excitedly. If they could get the treasure, King Can would undoubtedly reward him handsomely. There's no need to rush. I have something else to tell you. Even if Willow has the ability to solve the puzzle, she's still a woman and might not have the strength. When the time comes, I'll need your soldiers to move the constellation pieces, but I assure you, if we manage to complete this task, I'll request a reward of $5 billion from King Can. The condition is that you must do as I say unconditionally, Taylor instructed. 
In order for the mission to succeed, Taylor needed reinforcements. He knew that he couldn't accomplish it just by relying on himself. It's a deal. Bob didn't refuse. Five billion dollars was a large sum of money to him. In the morning, Willow went to work at Southlake Corporation as usual. When she arrived at the garage, she found Caspian standing in front of the car. I've been free these past few days. How about I drive you to work? Caspian said with a smile. What's going on? Why are you so eager to drive me to work? You're definitely up to something, she said, puzzled. It's only natural for me to drive my wife to work, right? Besides, you don't have a driver. Let me take on the role, but you don't have to pay me, he jokingly remarked. He said so to dispel her concerns. The reason he was insisting on accompanying her today was that he had received some news from Sylvia. She told him that the Tigrans were gathering information about Willow's grandfather. Caspian was worried that they might pose a threat to Willow, so he intended to stick close to her these days. Well, since you're eager to work, I'll still give you a salary, she said. She also thought it wasn't good in the long run for Caspian to remain unemployed. Since he wanted to work now, she'd give him a chance. Nodding, Caspian sat in the driver's seat. He drove Willow to Southlake Corporation. Shortly after they left, Sylvia, Macy, and the elite team followed them. They'd also been safeguarding Willow these past few days. Willow was still unaware that there might be danger looming over her. Has the situation at the company improved? Caspian asked while driving. You've never cared about the affairs in the company. The company's doing slightly better now, but we can't let our guard down. Willow answered. Southlake Corporation was slowly getting back to their feet, but Glorious Group was watching them closely. They couldn't let their guard down. I think Glorious Group will certainly close down in less than five days. By then, Southlake Corporation will dominate the entire Southlake City, Caspian said with a smile. In his view, he could deal with the other party in five days. Hence, when the time came, Glorious Group would close down too. What? In five days? How is that possible? They're thriving right now. Willow didn't believe Caspian's words at all. However, Caspian didn't refute as he knew that the next few days would prove his words right. They safely reached Southlake Corporation. Once Willow entered her office, she busied herself with work while Caspian leisurely read the newspaper on the sofa. She didn't bother him as she had a pile of documents to go through. The day passed without any unexpected incidents. As evening approached, Macy called Caspian. He left the office to take the call. Caspian, there are a few suspicious cars parked downstairs at Southlake Corporation, she said. Do you know the identities of the people in the cars? He asked. I'm not sure, but it's evident they're foreigners, Macy replied. It seems they're preparing to act. I'll leave with Willow. Both you and Sylvia get ready. If the people inside the cars are the special forces of Tigra, eliminate them on sight. Caspian instructed. I understand. After Macy finished speaking, she hung up. When Caspian returned to the office, he noticed Willow staring at him. Did you do something that you don't want me to know? Is that why you sneaked out to take a call? She playfully questioned, pretending to be angry. Chapter 190 Sudden Assassination Caspian was a little speechless, as he didn't expect Willow to have guessed correctly. Indeed, he did have something that he didn't want her to know about. This incident deepened Willow's misunderstanding of him. I saw you were focused on work, so I didn't want to disturb you. That's why I took the call outside, Caspian explained. Hand over your phone. I want to check it myself. You must be hiding something from me she demanded as she held out her hand. She only believed her eyes and ears as she was deeply worried that Caspian might betray her. Hearing this, Caspian broke into a cold sweat. The call records were still there, and if Willow took the phone, she would surely see them. It was a call from Macy, Caspian admitted. Macy, isn't she the beautiful woman who specially came to South Lake City to visit you? Your comrade of the opposite sex. Willow's face turned stern, and she intentionally emphasized the words opposite sex. Her impression of Macy was quite strong. Yes, she called to inform me that there are some suspicious individuals downstairs in the company. They seem to have ill intentions toward you, 
he no longer hid the truth and straightforwardly revealed the situation. What? Are you lying to me? Why would someone target me without any reason? Willow asked, half believing and half doubting his statement. How could I lie to you? This isn't something to joke about, Caspian said seriously. I'm already traumatized after the last kidnapping incident. Willow suddenly remembered the time when she was kidnapped. Even recalling it now made her feel terrified. Don't worry. As long as I'm here, they won't dare to harm you. Caspian assured her and patted his chest. Stop bluffing. It's better to be cautious, she said as she glared at him. She was extremely afraid now as she didn't want to go through the same incident as before. Caspian left the office with Willow and got into the elevator. Just as they reached the first floor, Matthew approached them. Caspian, Willow, there's a situation I need to report to you. There are several suspicious cars parked downstairs. Should I lead a team and chase them away? No need. I'll handle this matter, Caspian said calmly. Caspian was surprised that Matthew noticed the suspicious cars. It seemed Matthew had exceptional observational skills. Caspian felt that having him as the head of the security team was a waste. The reason he didn't let Matthew get involved in this matter was that the upcoming situation might be extremely dangerous. It would be better if fewer people were involved in it. I'm afraid these people have ulterior motives. It's dangerous for you to go out directly. Matthew expressed his concern. Don't worry. I've already noticed them. Caspian held Willow's hand and walked out of South Lake Corporation. Just as they stepped out, Willow spotted several sports cars. Feeling a little nervous, she held onto Caspian's hand tightly. As Caspian guided her past these cars, all the car doors suddenly opened. A dozen burly foreign men dashed out. They were all part of the special forces from Tigra. Under Bob's orders, they had been waiting here for quite some time. When they saw Willow appear, they grabbed their guns and rushed out. However, what surprised them was that Caspian was right behind her. But they couldn't afford to miss this opportunity. If Caspian managed to get into a car with Willow, they wouldn't be able to catch up. Another part of their mission was to kill Caspian. Now that the two targets were together, they could get their missions done in one go. When Willow saw a dozen armed men rushing out, she was terrified. Though Caspian had warned her about the potential danger, the current situation had far exceeded her expectations. Inside the company, Matthew saw the scene and wanted to rush out to rescue Caspian and Willow. However, the situation was critical, and it was almost too late to go out now. A series of rapid gunshots erupted as the Special Forces soldiers aimed their guns at Caspian. In a split second, Caspian lifted Willow and leaped away. From another direction, more gunfire followed. Willow let out a scream as she was startled by the gunfire. However, she felt secure being held tightly by Caspian. The Tigra special forces who fired at them all fell to the ground, one by one. Willow was surprised to see this, as she thought she was done for. Suddenly, she saw a group of people appear on the side of the road. Sylvia and Macy were leading the group. At this moment, Willow finally understood why Caspian was so unconcerned. It seemed he knew that his comrades were prepared. She realized she had misunderstood Caspian earlier in her office. It turned out that Caspian was discussing with Macy how to protect her. Willow felt that she was too sensitive lately, which led her to misunderstand Caspian. Matthew, who had rushed out, was extremely astonished to see all the foreign special forces killed. At this moment, Caspian had safely landed while holding Willow. In that split second, all dozen of the Tigra special forces soldiers were fatally shot. Sylvia and Macy rushed over. The citizens passing by South Lake Corporation were frightened and hurriedly fled upon witnessing the scene. Miranda was in her office sorting out documents when she was startled by the gunfire. She immediately came to the window to assess the situation. Caspian, Willow, are you okay? Sylvia asked with concern. We're fine. Sylvia, who are these people? Willow was surprised to see so many fully armed individuals appearing beneath her company. They're my comrades. They rushed over when they knew that Caspian was in danger. Sylvia explained. She didn't want to reveal Caspian's identity. After hearing Sylvia's explanation, Willow found it even more unbelievable. 
There was no way so many people came just to protect Caspian. She was even more suspicious about whether he was hiding something from her. Caspian, you two should leave immediately. I'll handle things here, Sylvia said. The Tigra special forces wouldn't just let the matter go easily. Willow was at a loss and had no choice but to follow Caspian. Once they got into the car, Sylvia instructed the 30 subordinates behind her. Ten of you stay here and clean up the mess, while the rest of you come with me to secretly protect Caspian. Also, inform the Inspector General's office about this incident. Yes. Macy nodded, and then she led about a dozen people into their cars. They followed closely behind Caspian's car. Ensuring Caspian's safety was Sylvia's top priority.